Hi guys, I am JM, this is The Lotus Diaries. It's May the 30th and that is the end of the English summer. Today I'm doing a little walk around video of the car, something that's been requested by a few people, notably the guys in the States who haven't really had the chance to view one up close. And now just for you guys, I'm going to set aside what little dignity I have left and don this very fetching headgear to give you a sort of POV look at what the car's like both outside and in. Okay. All right. Hi Sam. Okay, so here is lovely shiny yellow Lotus Evora. The color is just very uninventive. It is called Solid Yellow. Uh, the new CEO basically ditched all of the sunny, nice sounding names. I'm not entirely sure what color this actually previously was. I think it was definitely not Norfolk Mustard, which is a classic Lotus color. Uh, it's probably closer to something like Solar Yellow, but I haven't had the chance to put this car side by side with one of those to compare. Okay, so starting from the front, you've got this really nice big air intake here. You've got Xenon headlights. Now, none of this stuff opens up. There is a small service hatch here, which will open in a second. And basically all you do is you put windscreen washer fluid in there and brake fluid. You have your wheels here, 19 inch at the front, 20 inch at the back. They're 235 35s and then 285 30s at the back. And they are shod as standard with Michelin Pilot Supersport tires. Huge AP racing brakes, 370mm at the front, 350mm at the rear. I was doing some homework. The tyres on this car are actually 10mm wider at the front than a McLaren 570S and the same size at the rear. McLaren also used the same staggered 1920 uh, setup. So walking around you have petrol filler flap coming around the back. Now you notice that on this car Lotus have got little uh, reflectors which are for the US market. I guess it's a little way that Lotus saved a bit of money with the 400 that they didn't need the tooling for both. Around the back you've got a fairly heavily revised rear. I'll soon be doing a video comparing this car with a standard Evora S so you can see the differences between the two. Now when you're at the back we'll pull out the lovely key. Anyone who's ever driven a transit van will be familiar with this of course if you want to impress your friends you can say anyone that's ever driven an early Aston Martin DB9 or V8 Vantage will be familiar with this key. So to open the boot it's a very frustrating two clicks but not too fast. One, two and the boot will open. Don't leave this key in the boot. So you have your engine here, 3.5 litre Toyota V6 with an Edelbrock supercharger on it, 400 horsepower, 406 PS, 302.5 pound feet of torque and a modestly sized boot. The boot also goes quite far into the axis here and here. Uh, you could get a set of golf clubs in here. You would need a fairly small or soft bag. I haven't had a chance to test it with any clubs yet but I'm told it'll work. Uh, we put all our camera kit and stuff in here quite neatly and easily. So you also have the LED stoplight. You have a functional rear diffuser and parking sensors along here and reversing camera hiding up here. Now going back around on the inside very nicely appointed for a I was gonna say for a Lotus there but that's my uh, swear word on these videos it's a very nicely appointed car it's fairly simple but it's direct to the point there's leather everywhere these seats I've had painted in yellow so they are Sparco seats, which replace the older Recaros. And as you sit into the car, it's much easier to get into than basically any other car in the Lotus range. It's a reasonably sized entry and exit. You can see, by the way, the little, little rear seats back here. You would get small children in here. If they fit in a 911, they'll fit in here. If they're adults, don't put them in the back if you like them. So on the inside, you have the steering wheel which I've put to the side for my videos you have your switches and things up here it is a small interior I can prove that because basically you can operate basically anything in here from the driver's seat it's very nice there's a couple of parts bin items I think this is from the Vauxhall or GM parts bin the indicator stalks heaven knows where they're from but overall it's very nicely put together you've got the metal gear knob which will be familiar to the Lease and Exige owners the handbrake, all your AC controls, Alpine sat nav, which is actually quite handy. You have up here all your buttons, you've got heated seats, sport race mode, your emergency warning lights, 
lock, exhaust valve, heater sink driver side. And I noticed something quite fun earlier on this uh, sat nav. If you go to the information screen and you go to more, let's just imagine that you know you're going across Europe, you're driving out, you've done a thousand miles or so, you're parked inside some shopping centre, and then suddenly you want to buy the wife a gift, but you only know her sizes in UK sizes and you've just sent a branch of Victoria's Secret and you want to buy something but you want to make sure you get the right size well thankfully for Alpine you can find the cup sizes for women and band sizes in all the different areas of the world so there you go if your lady is a C cup in the UK in Australia she's a B there you go if, happen, if you happen to go lingerie shopping across the world and for some reason you take your car with you and nobody knows what they're doing you can find that out so that's kind of the interior of the car it sounds like we've got another one pulling up soon there we go there's Stuart and we're about to do a video now comparing the two Evoras so tune in for that one see you soon